Thanks, Phil, for having me. Um, today, what I'm going to talk about is a little bit about our journey. Customer service is something I'm really passionate about. If my customer wants to wear a pink tutu with their little puppy dog, talking on the phone, doing a spin, and still want to come and get my product, knock yourself out. If, so, you know what, it's actually the thing, the thing that got me about, about um, that big dialogue about you know, how outrageous we're on our mobile phones, what are the people behind, was the fact that they were considering themselves, not the customer first. And if we always, so if we always consider the customer first, well then it really doesn't matter. It's really whatever they want to do. So really we do build custom, one customer at a time and, and you know, we have things in our business and, and customers are everything. Like, and that's you know, my comment on the Today Show this morning is that if it's all about them, then the decisions are really easy. Um, for us, it's you walk into a store. That when, you, when, you, when you walk into a store, you should be greeted with a smile. The store should be bright, the product should be amazing, and you should feel good about yourself for choosing Boost. And I think that's our key, key um, line is I feel good about myself for choosing Boost. And it's not just about the product that tastes great. It's everything is how the customer how the staff member looks the experience you had how they said goodbye to you the, the the how long you waited you know it's the whole package everything we did we made, made it noisy we used me in PR we did everything we could to get our brand out there and we were very strategic in there it took, you know it was us that got up at five o'clock in the morning to take the the smoothies to the radio station it was us that actually drove to every single paper it was everything we could do to actually make sure our target market knew we, we existed the first thing is actually our customers and you know this is obviously a great breakfast to talk about the customers and what people tend to do about the negative experiences of customers is they tend to either ignore it, uh, because and the reason I know they ignore it, because when people contact us and we respond within 24 hours, they get so surprised that they've even heard from you. And that's, I find our customer complaints normally start with this. I'm never coming to Boost again, ever. I had the worst experience. And when I get them, I love them, because I know I can turn a person that goes, I hate you, to a raving fan. And the reason you do it is, first of all, you don't care if it was their fault or our fault. You don't care if they had a really bad day and they're taking it out on us. It doesn't matter because their perception was they had a bad experience. So we start with actually saying, we're sorry. We're really sorry you had this bad experience. You don't go, we'll look into it and see if you're right or wrong. We're really sorry. Here is a free card because we're gonna fix it. And if we don't fix this, please let us know again and you know, yeah, blah, blah, blah. It always, the next thing that they come back with is actually, funnily enough, they go, I'm really sorry, I might have been a bit hard, and you know, thank you very much. So it's, it's really interesting, and you can turn those negative customers into raving fans. And you also have to remember, the ones that actually complain are your noisy ones. And so gone are the days where, you know, 10 years ago we'd say, you know, if you have bad customer experience, they tell 10 friends. It's pretty easy now to actually Google and get some traction and tell a few million. One of my greatest concerns was that I, as we grew, how do I maintain our customer experience? And the one way, there's many ways, but one of the key ways is a guarantee in every single store. Basically, the guarantee says, for those people like me who can't really read that distance, um, basically says, we'll give you a great product with great service, and if we don't do it, we'll fix it. And I did it in every single store, one, to remind the customers, remind the staff, but also to open those doors of communication. So, because people, a lot of Australians go, oh, we don't complain. But what I'm saying is I'm introducing, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to give me that feedback. At the end of the day, that's it. You have to do anything for your customers. And the more we actually have that view of focus, customer focus, you know, how often do you do, how often do you get your customers in a room and ask them about yourselves? How, and you know what they think because what t we tend to do we sit in an ivory tower and we believe sometimes we believe our own bullshit so often you need to do qualitative and quantitative research on a regular basis people you know at the end of the day if we haven't got our staff that do these great things then you know we haven't got anyone and if it's all very well having this great customer focus but some people I don't know if you go to a store and you come across someone who just doesn't like people and they're in retail you go go in IT I think finally, um, we're nearly sort of near the end of it, um, the um, position pro product promotion. I mean, obviously, if you have the best product in the, in the market, but if no one knows about it, so really find a way of getting out there to your market. 
you know, position. Position for us is making sure we're in the right position in shopping centres. We are a instant buy. It's sort of you walk past and get it more so than destinational. Um, product, focus on your product. I think the key one though for me is, um, this is the one that actually probably motivated me more than anything else, which was being absolutely shitting myself. You know, people often said, oh, you know, were you this young girl who did lemonade and that type of thing and at, at a, you know, when you were seven, I was like, no, I just wanted an adventure, I just wanted to travel around, around the world. But really, at the end of the day, if, you're, if your goals aren't a little bit scary or if you're not pushed beyond your capabilities, then something's wrong. You're never going to get there. You're never going to get beyond. You know, I was scared that people were going to find out I didn't really know what I was talking about. I was scared. We'd already sold our family home to actually fund the business, so didn't have to lose that. Um, but you know, I was, like you know, we had everything on the line. You know, we were in our mid thirties, and you know, three kids at the time, and and it was, you know, it was fear. And then and then when people invested into the business, you know, it was then the fear of letting them down. So petrified was something that was a very common, a really common um, trait. I think with uh, most most people, like I, my kids come home, and if they've come home and they're dirty and they've got scraped knees and they've got bruises all over them, I reckon it's a good weekend. So I think sometimes pushing ourselves beyond our our boundaries and our what we think are capable of is um, is not a bad thing. It's something that I really believe in, and, and I think with life is that we actually get in life, you know, they they who know everything, five to ten great ideas. Most of the time we go nuts. No, nah, that means change, that means scary, that means I'm out of my comfort zone, no, 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 no. I think in life, if, if you look at the people who are successful, I think they say yes more than they say no. And so, and my girlfriends would stand here and laugh at me because I do say, I get myself into all sorts, I end up in Wagga in an army camp because I say yes, I think, oh, that'd be all right, yes. And so I'm more of a yes person than no person, but because of that, and because I take those opportunities that get given to me, it's amazing what life leads. I um, truly believe this and I live by it and I communicate by it and everything I do is by, by these sayings. It's too easy in this world to actually go be a verb and a verb for me is a victim, entitled, need to be rescued and I blame other people. If you live that way, you find your life spirals in that direction. If you live in the power of SOAR, and the power of SOAR is it's, you know, it's solutions. We will have problems every single day, it just happens. But if you, have, if you continue to work on solutions, you know, Einstein said that. Not that I'm smarter than anyone else, but I just stay at problems longer. Ownership, if we take ownership with every single problem, it's extraordinary how you will find things turn around. Be accountable. It's everything's your fault, gives you incredible power, and actually be responsible. So that's sort of what I want to leave you with. And if, even if you, if, even if you do an email and you're really shitty with someone you're doing an email, run this by it and see how you've communicated. If you run these with and say, okay, if it's under the SOAR banner, how else can I communicate it? And it's amazing if you then go and edit it, send it out, the different, in, different impact that has. Thank you very much for having me and I hope you enjoy the rest of the breakfast.